Okay, so let's start. No? So let's talk about analytical chemistry. What is analytical chemistry? The word itself suggests that this is a chemistry about analysis. Okay, so the word analytical uh, refers to analysis. Okay, so this subject is focused on the analysis of matter. Okay, and we can analyze matter uh, based on two types of analysis or research. No? So the first type of analysis is the qualitative analysis. No? And the next one is the quantitative analysis. Okay, so let's talk about qualitative analysis. Okay, so when you say qualitative analysis, we are pertaining to the qualities of matter. Okay, so what are the qualities of matter? It may include its identity, uh, its uh, color, its physical properties or chemical reactivities okay so those are the uh, qualitative uh, those are the scope of the qualitative analysis of matter so it it answers the question what uh, what substances are there you know, and what are their chemical reactivities and so on okay so it is more focused on the identity of your substances. When you say quantitative analysis, so quantity, that means we are pertaining to the amounts of matter. Okay. In, or, in your inorganic chemistry subject, we were able to have an idea about the qualitative and the quantitative aspects of matter. In your inorganic and uh, organic chem subject, the qualitative aspect of your matter involves the discussion about atoms, molecule, ions, uh, precipitation reaction, redox reaction, all those types of reactions. So those topics discussed before are included in the <clears throat> excuse me, in the qualitative chemical analysis. Okay. So you have to review your inorganic chemistry part for this uh for this part of the subject okay so that's about atom molecule ions their chemical reactivities will they form precipitates or not no and so on and so forth so in yung quantitative qualitative part ng anachem okay when we say quantitative we are pertaining to amounts of matter so what topic is that in your inorganic chem that's stoichiometry okay so this is just stoichiometry but of course it is leveled up now okay so we will see more equations uh different um concepts no additional concepts for this uh quantitative part of your subject okay so and you have to review your um uh, chemical reactions, uh, balancing equations, and the stoichiometry you know, um, for you to be able to catch up with the lessons sa anakem, okay? So, yun. So, basically, what we are pertaining to this subject is that this is just in our chem, but leveled up na, okay? So, yun. So, kaya kaya nyo yan. You can ace this subject, no? Because this is just in our chem with more equations okay? okay so what are we going to do with the subject okay so our focus here is to see or it is to learn the fundamental uh, concepts of qualitative and quantitative analysis and then to apply it in your field now especially uh, for medical technologies you are the one who will be doing uh, chemical analysis with samples for example human blood or urine okay so those samples you have to check the uh, no, the concentration of substances that are in there for example you want to check the creatinine level the glucose level okay and what are the implications of having um some values, uh, for example, certain concentrations of your uh, substances there. No? Kunwari, yung glucose level nyo, that's, let's say, 150. Uh, 150 something, and I forgot the unit. <laughs> okay, so, kunwari, 150 siya siya. Uh, what is the implication? Are you diabetic or not? Okay, so what are the possible um, dietary changes that must be taken by the patient, okay? So, you are the one who will be dealing with those problems. Now, 
Ayun. So, in order to understand them, you have to take Anakem first, no? So, you can... Uh, so you can guide your patients in the future okay so okay so this course will begin with the concepts of chem basically just a review of in org or chem uh where we will also have discussions on stoichiometry okay uh, equilibrium reactions and chemometrics when i say chemometrics that is uh stat statistics applied in chemistry okay so yes, there is statistics here. Okay. So, however, it's just basic stats. No, usually, I know, usually sent. Uh, ayun. Usually, is ano lang siya. Uh, measures of central tendency, the mean, median, mode, RSD, standard deviation. That's all. Okay. So our objectives here for this course are the following. So number one is for you to analyze the concepts behind measurement, solution, stoichiometry, statistical analysis of data, qualitative and quantitative analysis, and chemical reaction, most of which has been discussed to you already last semester. So you really have, so you have to review all of them, man. Eh? Okay, because starting next week, we will start our formal classes, Nana. Okay, so just review your in-org. Once you were able to do that, you're good to go with Anakem. Okay, so next one is to develop scholarly effort in understanding the fundamental concepts in analytical chemistry through research and experiments through virtual lab exercises. Okay, so, may typo ata. Anyway, so last semester, we were unable to do virtual lab exercises. Although we have videos of um, laboratory experiments, no? uh, however, this time, it is not uh, uh, enough. No? That's not enough to, to achieve the goals of our, uh, no, of our lessons. No? So that's why we really have to do virtual lab exercises. So that means... Uh, we will be doing um, lab exercises that are available online. So I will give the uh, links and as we go on with our subject. No? So, yeah, because visualization hindi na siya enough. No? That's not enough for, uh, to grasp the, for us to grasp the concept very well. No? So we have to do virtual lab talaga. So, yun lang. Uh, next one is to discuss the different principle theories and laws governing the methods of chemical analysis and their application to real life situation. Okay, so we will try to see uh, what our lessons mean talaga, no? So, ano yung pwedeng magamit? San siya pwede gamitin? Okay, so we will discuss that also and last one we are going to manage solving life related problems using scientific method okay this all science no? okay so in lang so basically what i'm telling you to do is to uh is to review your in org no? review your in org and then once you were able to do that uh, we will uh you will find anakem easy no so, ganun lang. Ito pa pala, number five. Communicate the value of maintaining the different chemical processes naturally occurring within the environment. Okay. So, all of which has been attained already in your in-org. No? So, we will just strengthen it in the subject. Okay. So, our course material would be this one, uh, Introduction to Analytical Chemistry by Skug et al. No? So, this is a textbook. Okay. So, last time... Last semester, you are just only given ebook and access codes, right? So this semester, that's not the case, no? Physical book na yung ibibigay sa inyo, no? Okay, once you order this textbook, they will give you physical copy of this book. It will be, de it will be delivered at your home. Uh, first question, is this required? Um, I will not require this textbook. No. Why? Because I don't know your finances. Okay, some of you may have plenty of money to uh, to spare, pero some of you may not have. No, so I won't require this textbook. No, just buy whenever you 
feel uh, na kailangan mo siya. No? So, ganun lang. Uh, this costs around 945 pesos. No? And that will be delivered to you. Okay? In physical form. Okay. So, yun. This will not be required uh, because I don't know your finances or you know your budget well. No? Pero, uh, if you have uh, spare money, uh, you can invest in textbooks. No? Again, this is a physical book. So, um, maganda siya gamitin. No? So, so, ganun lang. Okay. So, next one, course requirements. Okay. So, for you to pass this semester, you have to take the following assessments. So, our assessments are categorized into two, formative and summative assessments. So, for the formative assessment, let's just squeeze us now. So, for the entire semester in the, in the lecture part, you will have 10 quizzes. Okay. So, five per term. Okay, so five quizzes in the midterm, five quizzes in the finals. Okay, so that's 10 in total. Okay, so quizzes are usually 20 points. Uh, the passing score is 10 points. Okay, uh, sometimes it's multiple choice. Some, sometimes it is free response type. No? So I will advise naman kung anong type ng exam yung ito take ninyo. Okay. So, ganun, mostly MCQ, multiple choice questions, and quizzes. Okay. For the summative assessment, uh, this is just examination, which you will take on the end of the midterm and the final term. Na? Okay. So, that's around 100 points in total. And passing score is, of course, 50 points. But, of course, if you want to get higher grades, uh, you, should, you should have better scores under the uh, 50 above no? so yun lang uh, multiple choice questions and then this will be a departmental exam departmental exam unlike last semester no where the examination is different per instructor so this sem this sem uh, the department told us no, to make the assessments departmentalized okay so everyone will take the same exam for a limited time okay so ganun lang okay so the grading system are the following so for you to get your final grade uh, that is the sum of 50% uh, of your lecture grade and 50% of your laboratory grade okay so for your lecture grade component uh, we can compute that as 50% of your formative assessment and 50% of the summative assessment, okay? So try to get uh, at least 70% uh, in your assessments, then uh, I will assure you that you will get the grades of B, B plus, or A, no? Okay, so just get 70% uh, or higher, okay? So FAU is run through student-centered learning approach, no? Okay, where the shift of focus of instruction is from teacher, no, to students. However, uh, I do not follow this, no, because of course this is chemistry. No one will understand chemistry at first grade, no. So I will be teaching you. Um, expect that we will have regular meetings, talaga, no. I will not. You may read in advance, pero I will discuss that in classes pa rin. So, yun. So, um, let's call it spoon feeding. No, not, not so spoon feeding, but yeah, I do that. No, because, you know, chemis chemistry is hard. So, I have to guide you talaga. Okay. And this will be our course outline. So, fo let's focus here on the lecture part. So, for this week, we are going to do the orientation. Okay. And then by next week, we will start our review of general chemistry, okay? So this review of Gen Chem will involve discussions on measurements, uh, conversions, the significant figures, no? so yeah. And by next week, we will do sampling, standardization, and calibration, okay? That's just about... Uh, how we deal with instruments in anakem na and then that is followed by chemical equilibrium okay and 
electrolyte effects and equilibrium then we will have midterm exam na. so yun yung coverage ng midterm okay for the finals uh for weeks 10 to 12 uh, 10 to 11 we will have our discussion on titration followed by fundamentals of potentiometry titration redox titration and voltammetry basically this is just a uh, redox reaction at all okay so redox lang yan so review your redox reactions eh? that will be followed by fundamentals of spectrophotometry and introduction to analytical separations then we will have our final exam on may 17 to 22 okay and this is the schedule of assessments now okay so we will not have any assessments until the third week of our semester okay because adjustment period patayo until next week okay so yeah so we will start having quizzes by around first week of february if i'm not mistaken uh so we will have the first quiz on the first week of february now okay and again ano pa? so you can see there are only four chapters however we are asked to have five quizzes diba? because uh there are certain chapters that will require um two quizzes no at at most no so anong chapter yon uh, we are pertaining to chapter 3 okay so we will have two quizzes here and chapter um, let's say chapter 5 no so two quizzes tied okay so expect that we will have two quizzes for chapters 3 and chapter 5 because the topics there uh, discussed there are very fundamental no okay so to further test your mastery then we will have two quizzes for those chapters okay uh, this is for total analog learners i believe there's no tal students here okay so we'll skip this one Okay, so classroom policy number one, fulfill your task with academic integrity. Um, despite the, uh, the flexible rules on online learning, just be honest na lang, especially when taking assessments. Yun lang. So I hate students who cheat, although I do not have any measures to control that because we are in an online setting. Uh, however, I would like to remind you that you will have your board examination in the future. No? So uh, we don't know when karma will hit. No? So as of now, um, try to change your routine no? para hindi kayo makarma. Okay, so just do your tasks with academic integrity. Do not cheat, no? And just be honest with yourself. If you don't if you do not know the answer in your quizzes, then so be it. Okay. Then you can ask me uh uh naging ganito ganyan, no? How is this solved? No. So I will answer you right away naman. Okay. And then acquire your course materials. Um all your lessons have been uploaded on Canvas, no? So tignan natin siya. <coughs> so this is our Canvas account, no? For the subject, uh, I I already uploaded the lessons here. Okay, so these are the power uh, PDF files, the powerpoints uh, for the lecture from the beginning of the semester until the end okay and so and you can download all of them na, na. for the laboratory that is also uploaded here so please down please download them so these are the powerpoint files now that we will use now uh, through uh, do, uh, ay, these are the powerpoint files that we will use uh, for the entire semester okay other than the PowerPoint files, I also uploaded some additional reference materials no, uh, that you may uh, find useful during the semester. Okay. So I uploaded two textbooks. Uh, one is Chemistry 12th edition by Chang and Goldsby. 
the other is quantitative chemical analysis ninth edition by harris okay so this book okay this chemistry 12 edition um this is a good reviewer no uh, the subject is used in general uh, i mean this book is used in general chemistry subjects or inorganic chemistry subjects no? so if you want to recall your inorg topics read this book okay yes uh, this is the textbook I use in my college days now, and I find it very, very useful. So, uh, if you have spare time, go read this one. Now. Okay. Then this one, uh, quantitative chemical analysis, ninth edition. This is my favorite analytical chem textbook. Now, we also use SCOOG. No, the reference material I told you, uh, kanina. No? Okay, so we also use SCOOG. However, I find this textbook no, uh, better. No, feel ko lang, no. So I find this better because I understand it at first read. Kasi no, nawaan ko siya sa unang basa. Uh, pero, yun nga, this is not the required textbook. So I just uploaded the two no, para may additional reference material kayo. Okay, so yun. So you may download them, Pano, and just go to files. Um, okay, so to download your lessons, your PowerPoint files, just click the uh, button here and download the folder, okay? That will be downloaded as zip file, okay? So to download the textbooks, uh, the two materials i uploaded there just do the same now download them and that will be saved to your pc as pdf file okay so this worksheet folder uh every chapter discussion i upload worksheets now to further um exercise your minds now as a chapter now so some uh, I, I will upload the uh, worksheets uh, per chapter as we start our discussions na next week now so, wala pa siyang laman. No? It's empty for now, but that will be filled up with uh, materials later on. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yun. Please download the materials now. So, after this this uh, uh, class, you can start downloading them now. Okay. Next one, organize your schedule. Uh, Anna Kim is... A hard subject, you know, to be honest with you. This is a hard subject because it re it requires maths. You no, know? so for every chapter we will be doing calculation. Uh, there are students who excel at maths, you no, know? so they will find anachem easier. However, there are students who lag behind. You no, know? for those students who are not that good enough in mathematics, uh, please give more time. You no, know, sa anachem ninyo. Okay. So give. Give this subject more time to review because, again, uh, we will be doing maths starting next week until the end of the semester. So we will do lots of calculations which involves algebra, logarithms, exponential functions. So if you do not know them, review them. Okay. So, yeah. Because most of the students fail chemistry, not because they find the subject hard, no, but they find the calculations intimidating, no. So yun naman yun ang yari talaga, di ba? Um, students fail not because of the subject, but because of the maths in the subject, no. So if you want to avoid that from happening, then you have to strengthen your maths, no. Review your algebra, okay? So yun lang. And then lastly, raise your concerns to the instructor when you have difficulties with internet connections, no? especially during exams. No? Okay, so if you will not be able to take the assessment because of, of certain circumstances, then let me know. No? Okay, so ganun lang. So let's try to make things flexible for you. No? So yun lang. Uh, with that, welcome to analytical chemistry and I hope you will enjoy the subject despite the match involved in the subject no? so yun lang uh, do you have any questions before we proceed with the overview of anakem uh, baka may question kayo please 
message them in the chat box na lang. Okay, so wala. Check ko lang yung former students ko dito. Ilang ba to? Isa. Dalawa. <coughs> Excuse me. Mga apat lata kayo dito. <laughs> so, hello po. No? Okay. So anyway, so without uh, any questions, let's start with the actual discussion part. No, this is chapter zero of this as uh, of this subject. No? Chapter zero that means orientation nanto. Okay. So let's talk about analytical chemistry. Let's have an overview of the subject. No, let's see the general picture of this subject. Okay. So we will, uh, so we can appreciate the subject, no? So we will have motivation of studying this subject. Okay. So this, uh, again, as I told you earlier, analytical chemistry is a, is a subject of chemistry that is focused on analysis. Now, we are analyzing matter here. Okay. Since this, the main concept of this subject is to analyze matter, it is found to be very useful in all fields of sciences. No? Whether that's physics, geology, engineering, no? they all use anachem. No? Okay. Why? Because anachem focuses on answering the question what substances are there and how much of those substances are there no? okay those two questions are related to other fields of sciences no? and i will explain that uh, later no? so yeah, so anachem this is a chemistry of uh, this is a chemistry focus on analysis no and this is used in all fields of sciences because it answers the question what and how much matter are there in those substance uh, in those materials okay so there are two types of analysis in analytical chemistry the first one is qualitative analysis and the other one is quantitative analysis okay as i told you earlier Qualitative analysis focuses on the qualities of matter. Okay, so when we say qualities, we are pertaining to the identity, the chemical reactivity, the physical properties of matter. Okay, so that will be answered by qualitative analysis. Okay, when we say quantitative analysis, we are pertaining to the amounts of matter. Okay, so this this the question uh this part of analysis answers the question what okay what substances are there so qualitative analysis will answer that for quantitative analysis it will answer the question how much okay so tandem sila parate no? so these two analysis uh work hand in hand no? okay in anachem <coughs> okay so since we are talking about the amount of substances here, except uh, expect no, na expect that we will have stoic calculations here. Okay, in the quantitative analysis part of this subject. Okay, so yun lang. Okay, so let's take a look at the role of analytical chemistry. So as I told you earlier, anachem is used in all fields of sciences. Okay. Okay, so let's look at this diagram and let's try to explain why anachem is related to all other fields of sciences, okay? Of course, let's skip the obvious part, okay? So anachem is, of course, related to chemistry, no? And medicine, no? And let's say biology. So obvious na yun, eh? Uh, let's check on the other fields of sciences that, re that requires anachem, no? So for example, physics. How is physics related to anachem? Okay. So let's begin with an example. For example, our star. No? According to scientists, our star is 99%, its mass is 99% uh, hydrogen and 1% of other elements such as helium, lithium, carbon, magnesium, and calcium. No? So those are the elemental composition of the star. The question is, how are they able to identify the elements that are there and to quantify the elements that are there? No? So, in yung question. How are they able to do that? No? 
paano nila nalaman yung elements doon? How were they able to know the elements in the star? The answer there is Anakem. Okay? If you could still recall, we this uh, one of the topics for Anakem this semester is spectrophotometry. Okay? So the spectrophotometry part of Anakem is used in physics to identify the elements in the star and to quantify them. No? What is a spectro uh, photometry? So spectro, that means light, okay? Metry meaning measurement. No? So we can identify and measure the elements in celestial objects by just using light. No? Remember that for each element, there are certain wavelengths, no? No, so there are certain wavelengths at which they uh, emit colors, diba? For example, uh, let's say carbon. So carbon, when that's heated, uh, the color is orange. Kapag yan ay lithium, the color is red. If that's potassium, that's lilac. If that's copper, that's green, no? For each element, there are certain wavelengths of light. No? And what physicists do is that they detect the wa that wavelength. No? So for example, uh, as a star natin, they focus certain instruments in our star. No? They collect the wavelengths emitted by that star, and then they interpret it as elements. Okay. When you talk about, <coughs> excuse me, when you talk about quantitation naman, for example, how were they able to determine that this star is 99% hydrogen? How were they able to do that? Okay, Depending on the intensity of that color emitted by the element in the star, depending on the intensity, they can measure the quantity. Okay, So, yeah. One example would be, uh, let's say, let's compare our star, the sun, with Betelgeuse. No? Uh, in the Orion constellation. So Betelgeuse is a red giant, no? Okay, so it's like red-orange in color because it is primarily composed of carbon, no? And once the uh, star is composed of carbon already, it is going to undergo supernova in the near future, diba? So you know, ano, physics done. Okay, so let's compare Betelgeuse and the star. Okay, our star is whitish in color, yellowish, no? Pero the Betelgeuse is orange, red orange. Why? Because Betelgeuse contains more carbon than our star. Remember, carbon, when heated up, emits orange colors, diba? So that is also true for Betelgeuse because the star is composed of carbon atoms. No? The glow of that star is red orange, okay? Compare that to our star, hindi ganun yung case, no? Okay? So that's not the case for our star, okay? So depending on the intensity of certain colors, we can actually measure the amounts of matter, okay? If it is bright orange or it is reddish orange, that means it contains more carbon compared to other stars no? with different colors. No? So that's how they measure the quantity of the elements in celestial bodies, okay? So that that spectrophotometry is not only used for stars, but it is also used in um, determining uh, the components of other exoplanets. No, so for example, they said that this exoplanet contains water. How were they able to do that? How were they able to identify that there are water molecules there? The answer is spectrophotometry. Okay. So that's the relation of physics with analytical chemistry, okay? So yeah. Next one, let's try to see the relation of engineering field with anachem. No? So engineers are, <coughs> excuse me. So our engineers are making materials no, that are optimized enough no, so we can maximize its use, diba? So, for example, let's say concrete three bars, no, yung mga bakal sa construction, okay. So those concrete three bars, no, yung mga bakal, 
Now, there are composed of certain amounts of elements no? to, makes it, uh, to make its uh, strength optimized. No? Because if you, for example, if you add too much carbon, then that material will be brittle enough. No? It will not be able to support the weight of the concrete. No? However, if you do not add carbon, that will not be flexible enough. No? So you cannot bend it. Okay, and uh, you cannot bend it. No? So that means engineers have to mix certain elements in our concrete tree bars, yung bakal, no? in order to make it uh, flexible enough, yet not so brittle. Okay, so that's how engineers create materials. No? They mix certain amounts of elements, no? until they come up with an optimized version of it. No? And that is actually discussed in their subject, Strength of Materials. No? So, nandun yung sa subject na yun, they discuss uh, what are the effects when you add too much of these elements. No? So, yeah, that's the relation of engineering with Anakem. No? So, they try to measure what's the optimum components. No? What's the op optimum percentage of each component in their materials? So we will have better materials now in creating buildings, for example. Okay. So, <coughs> excuse me. So let's check on this one, social sciences. Uh, how is this one? How is this field of science related to Anakem? No? So let's have an example, uh, forensics. No? So there was this time when uh, I was able to attend an orientation seminar no? by a forensic chemist. No? Okay, so she was a forensic chemist in Valenzuela City Police. Okay, so yun. Um, she told us the relation of anakem in her field of study, forensics. No? Because in forensics, uh, the, the usual question they answer is when did this person die and how does this how did this person die? Neba? So that's the common question in forensic. Okay. So to answer that according to that chemist, uh, to answer that question, uh, they use anakem. No? Uh, her first case was a cadaver that just died out of nowhere. And the question uh, asked to her is, how did this person die, di ba? So, yun daw, paano daw yung namatay yung taong yun? So, as a chemist, of course, she knows that the answer can be found when you use anakem. Okay? So, what she, what she did is that she looked at the internal organs of the, bod, uh, of the cadaver uh, she processed those uh, internal organs to extract the substances that are, uh, that are in there. And then uh, during her analysis, she found out that there are set certain levels of cyanide in the body. Okay. So that means the person died because of cyanide poisoning. Okay. So uh, most probably uh, the person may have used silver cleaner no uh, to commit suicide no because silver cleaner contains cyanide diba? and cyanides can hijack your uh, metabolism no so you, you will die instantly so yun yung findings niya no? okay so by just determining the certain amounts of concentration uh, the certain amounts of substances in the body you can predict no how the how did the person die you know? so you know forensics now that's the link of forensics with anakem and so uh, next one environmental science so let's talk about meteorology how is meteorology related to anakem so let's have an example um Okay, the, the ozone hole. No? So how are the meteorologists able to identify that there is a ozone, an ozone hole in the Antarctica? No? So the answer there is spectrophotometry. No? So our satellite collect data. No? So they scan the ozone, uh, the ozone concentration in the upper atmosphere. No? And then when you map out the concentration data in the blue, in the map, no, you will see that there are cert, uh, there are very low levels of ozone over Antarctica, no. So that's how they were able to um, 
identify that there is ozone hole in Antarctica, di ba? So, yun. They use the spectrophotometry to measure the amounts of ozone in our atmosphere, no? Through satellites, okay? And then, last one. So, okay. So, let's see the link of geology with ANACEM. So, how are these two fields, uh, how are these two fields related, di ba? So, let's have, for example, uh, carbon dating, no? So, for example, you uh, a geologist was able to uh, find an artifact, the right? So the question there is, when did this last uh, existed, no? Kailan siya huling nabuhay, no? So to, in order for you to identify the time before this uh, this species died, no? This species died, no? You have to do carbon dating. So carbon dating involves the comparison of carbon-14 element, no? The carbon-14 isotope in that uh, artifact, no? You compare it with the envi uh, no, with the ambient carbon-14 content, no? So by comparing the two concentrations of carbon-14 uh, using calculus, you will be able to find uh, when did this uh, species died now? Okay, so yun yung, ano, that's the link of geology with Anakem. Okay, so as you can see, uh, there are links of Anakem with other fields of sciences, no? And that's just few to mention. Uh, uh, hindi pa natin na mention lahat, no? So that this just emphasizes that Anakem is really related with all fields of sciences, no? Because it can answer the questions what and how many, okay? So, <clears throat> given that, uh, we should be able to see Anakem not just only uh, not only as a hard subject but is an important subject as well, no? So, hindi lang to mahirap. Important din itong subject na to, okay? So, uh, this should be our motivation in uh, studying Anakem, no? Because... Uh, unless you see the importance of Anakem, tatamarin kayo eh, no? So, yun. You will find the subject hard no? to appreciate if you do not see the importance of the subject with all the fields of science. No? That's why you have to study this subject all din, no? So, the reason why you have to study this is because it is related to your field, no? Uh, it can identify the molecules that are there in your samples and it can identify the concentration of those molecules in your samples which are which you're going to do in the future diba? once you were registered already na, no, after passing the board exam no? for example drug testing how are they able to see na may drugs yung ano sample no so the, to analyze the drugs in your sample, they use uh, chromatography, okay? So they analyze the substances that are in your blood or urine. Yun yung ginagamit for drug testing, di ba? Urine or blood. So they check what are the molecules that are in there through chromatography, okay? So they separate um, the molecules, then they look for certain peaks, no? for drugs no such as methamphetamine hydrochloride and etc no so if the peak exists no if that signal exists for that molecule that means that's that person is positive in uh, positive for drugs no if not uh, the negative siya. okay so that's uh, how anakem is related to your field no it answers the question what elements are there, what substances are there, and how much of those substances are in the sample. Okay, so when we do analytical chemistry, uh, this is heavily dependent on measurement. Uh, okay, so when we are doing measurements in the quantitative analysis, uh, we can do it directly or indirectly. Uh, Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me. Um, direct measurement and indirect measurement. So there are two types of measurements in Anakem. No? So one is direct measurement, the other is indirect measurement. No? So let's talk about direct measurements. When you say direct measurement, we are obtaining the amounts of data, uh, the amounts of substance, 
by just obtaining the mass or the volume of it. No? Okay, so just get the mass of the sample uh, of your sample. So that is the actual amount of the substance that are in there. For example, you are given one kilogram of coal. Okay, so one kilogram of coal is equivalent to one kilogram of carbon, diba? So that's direct measurement now. So you are not going to compute anymore because the mass is is the amount of the substance itself now. So ganun lang. Okay, so the indirect measurement naman involves the use of proportions. No? So you will relate the amount of substance based on other properties of matter such as mass, volume, intensity of light, or electric charge. No? So for example, the intensity of light. No? As I told you earlier, if the star is brightly orange, that means it contains more carbon. If it is faint. Uh, if it is faintly orange, uh, let's say yellow or blue, uh, it doesn't contain carbon at all. So depending on the intensity of certain colors, you can quantify or you can measure the amount of elements that are in there. Diba? Okay. So yeah. uh, for example, electrical charge no? uh, in your glucose meters, no? Uh, glucose meters use electrical charge as measure to determine the glucose levels in your blood. No? So depending on the voltage that is passed through the circuit, no? it's a blood sample. Nyo, okay? So depending on the current or the voltage that is passed through your blood, no? the instrument, no? the glucometer, the glucose meter, can determine the concentration of glucose in your blood. No? So for uh, another example with the pH meter. So pH meter actually determines the changes in the voltage no, of your solution from the reference solution inside the pH meter. So by just determining the differences of uh, in voltages of the two solutions, no, it can determine the pH of your solution. No? It can determine the concentration of hydronium ions. Okay. So that's indirect uh, measurement. No? So again, what's the difference between direct and indirect measurements? No? Indirect measurements uses proportion. No? It uses other properties of matter to determine the amounts of certain elements. Okay? So, yun. Yun lang yung difference. No? Pag direct, as is. Pag indirect, uh, you have to do ratio and proportion. Okay? Depending on the signal of the instrument, no? may corresponding measurement yun. Uh, examples, pH meter, uh, glucose meters. No? Yun. Okay, so last part na tayo. Malapit na tayo sa last part ata. Check ko nga. <coughs> ah, yes. Okay, so when doing... Uh, quantitative analysis in ANACEM, there are four ways of doing measurement. There are four ways uh, in which we can get data. No? So the first one is gravimetric analysis. Uh, from the word itself suggests that we are using mass to determine the amounts of substances here. Okay. So again, gravimetric analysis, we use weight or mass to determine the amounts of substances no? in your sample. Uh, volumetric analysis or volumetric method makes use of the volume instead of the mass. No? So the, depending on the volume of the substance used in uh, a chemical reaction, you can actually compute for the amount of the substance that are used. No? So you can convert the volume into moles of the substance by using certain formula, no? which will be discussed next week. Electroanalytical methods, uh, this is a method of uh, quantitative analysis which makes use of electrical properties of light, uh, uh, of matter. No? So depending on the voltage, current, resistance, and the electric charge, you can actually determine the concentration or the amounts of substances in your sample. Okay. And lastly, we have the spectroscopic methods of analysis. So spectroscopic analysis makes use of light, no? the interaction of matter with the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, So 
Yan. That's how they determine the substances present in stars and their concentration. Okay. So again, there are four ways to obtain data, measurement data in Anakem. So the first one is gravimetric analysis. This is analysis that involves measurement of mass or weight. No? So you will be able to have an idea how much of this element is present in your sample. Okay. The next one is volumetric analysis okay, or volumetric method. It makes use of the volumes of the substances used in chemical reaction to determine the amount of your uh, substances na present in your sample. Electroanalytical methods makes use of electrical properties of matter to determine the amount of matter no, in your sample. Okay, depending on the voltage, there is uh, an equivalent concentration. Okay, so that's true for pH meters and glucose meters. Nga, just as I told earlier. No? And then lastly, spectroscopic methods. It makes use of uh, the interaction of matter with light no, or the electromagnetic spectrum. So depending on how it interacts with the EMR, electromagnetic radiation, you can actually identify and quantify the amounts of that substance in your sample. Okay. And these are the other methods of analysis in Anakem, which we will not discuss because um, and dami na masyado. Okay. Uh, this, that's too much na. No? So, we will not cover the miscellaneous methods na. No? Okay. Uh, only the four methods na. No? So, ito yung discuss natin. Uh, we will discuss uh, this one and this one for the midterms and the last two for the finals na. No? So, that's why our course outline is written the way it is because of this na. No? So, yan. <coughs> okay. When we're doing a uh, quantitative analysis we do uh, we follow this flow chart now we follow these methods now that tells us how to do analysis in anakem now so first things first uh, in order for you to be able to identify the amount of your substance you have to select your method whether that's gravimetric analysis volumetric analysis electroanalytical analysis or spectroscopic analysis now Depending on the nature of your matter, you have to choose which of those four methods of analysis uh, is best for your sample. Okay, so once you are able to choose one, then you have to acquire your sample uh, in your field. Acquiring sample means you have to collect the urine, the feces, or the blood. No, okay, so ganun yung ganap madalas na no, sa med tech. So pili kayo ng method. You choose your method. Uh, for example, you want to test the creatinine levels of this person. So you have to do volumetric analysis now. So you collect uh, urine samples, then you analyze your <coughs> samples. Okay. You process your sample uh, because there are some substances that are in your sample that are not necessary for the analysis. Uh, for example, blood. No. Uh, when do, when doing ano when doing drug test no in yung blood hindi mo siya ilalagay sa instrument no you will not place your blood sample directly in the chromatography instrument hindi mo siya ipabasok agad no you have to treat your uh, sample first no you have to remove some substances in your blood no so it will be fit for use uh, sa chromatography device no? or in the chromatography instrument, okay? So you have to remove some of the unnecessary substances in your sample so you will have good results, no? Otherwise, it will fail, okay? So you have to process your sample first, okay? By eliminating interferences. <coughs> so what are interferences? There are other substances mixed in your sample that may give false results okay so you have to remove them okay and there are certain methods of removing them um so it it varies kasi depending on your substance no? anyway so after you were able to eliminate those interferences then you can measure your desired property then you can calculate your results no and then you can estimate the reliability of your results no? 
So again, uh, why do we have to estimate the reliability of our results? Now, this means that you have to uh, obtain your data at least three times. Now, we call this triplicates. Now, in Anakem, you should do analysis at least three times. Now, you should have triplicates of that result. Now, because uh, sometimes you just get the uh, the concentration of the substance by chance no minsan by chance lang chamba lang na nakuha niyo yung ganitong concentration no uh, we want to avoid that by chance factor when doing analysis because that's bad no? so hindi siya maganda when we do analysis pag puro na lang ano chamba yun nangyari because yun nga uh, it can give us false results no so yeah so we want to see whether our data are consistent no every time you do the anal you do the ano, analysis no so yeah so yun lang uh, ito pala yung explanation okay so so you have to pick the method that is this ano that is suitable for your sample okay depending on the complexity of your sample there are certain uh, methods that must be taken no then you acquire your sample, no? <coughs> okay, then you process your sample, uh, you remove the interferences, no? Okay, so that your results are reliable enough, no? Ah, tapos na pala. Okay, and then lastly, you verify the reliability of results using triplicates or statistics, no? So, yeah, so that's how we do analysis in Anakem. No? So, yun lang. Uh, that's all for today. No? So, let's, uh, let's summarize this, uh, no? this lesson lang. No? So, in summary, what we are doing here is that we are trying to see the importance of Anakem and how we do chemical analysis. No? So, what's the importance of Anakem in uh, the fields of sciences? No? Marame, no? So, Anakem is very important to other fields of sciences because it can identify and measure matter, no? Which are which are necessary tools, no? To make other fields of sciences successful, no? Whether that's engineering, whether that's uh, forensic, geology, material science, no? So, Anakem is useful for those fields of sciences, no? In order for them to make optimum uh, materials, optimized materials, no? Or, and just to identify the amounts of matter, no? And see its, uh, its consequences, no? Sa atin, no? So, yun. So Anakem is very important to all fields of sciences because it can help other fields of sciences to identify and to measure certain elements no, or substances that are present in their samples. No? So, yeah. And then when we are doing uh, ano, analysis in Anakem, we can have direct or indirect uh, measurements. No? So when you say direct, you get the amount of your sample directly by just obtaining its mass or volume without any calculations at all. However, for indirect methods of measurement, uh, you have to use proportions, you have to use other properties of matter in order for you to get the amounts of your matter. No? So depending on the, <coughs> excuse me, depending on the brightness of your uh, sample, that means that we have this amount of substance in there. No? So, kapag faint color yan, so, onti lang yung ganitong substance. If that's very brightly colored, that means we have lots of this substance in your sample. Okay? And then, we obtain data using four general, general methods of analysis. So, we have the gravimetric method of analysis, which helps us to get uh, quantitative data by just using mass, okay? Then the next one is the volumetric method of analysis, uh, which makes use of volume in order for us to get uh, quantitative data in Anakem. Uh, electroanalytical methods, this, this makes use of uh, electrical properties of matter in order for us to identify and to measure the concentration of our substances in there. 
And then lastly, spectroscopic methods. Uh, we make use of the properties of matter and their behavior with the electromagnetic spectrum in order to quantify the elements or the substances present in your sample. Okay. With those four methods of analysis, we can do, um, we can follow this flow chart no, of chemical of chemical quantitative analysis. So ito yung general steps no, when doing uh, experiments in anachem. Okay. So you do not have to memorize this naman. No? Okay. So that's how anachem works. No? It seems like complicated. Yes. Pero this is necessary no, sa field ninyo. Okay. So anachem will be quiet for a while. Uh, uh, quite hard for a while, no? <clears throat> Medyo mahirap lang siya for certain amounts of time. Pero, once you were able to get used to it, no? Okay na yan. Magiging madali na yan, no? Just review your in-org chem, no? Just review your in-org chem and everything will, ano, will be easy na, no? So, ganun lang. Just review your chem reactions, your stoichiometry, no, once you're able to do that, then, ayan, kay madaling madali na yung anak em sa inyo, okay? So, any questions about our uh, overview of anak em, overview to anak em? Orientation part pa lang to, ha? <laughs> so, go orientation pa lang tayo. This is not the actual lesson pa, <laughs> okay? So, ayan, umpisa pa lang to, okay? So, um, before I end our ano, our session, uh, I would like to introduce myself. Okay, some of you has been my former student, no? So they already know me. So you can ask them. No? Uh, some of my former students here include uh, si Shira Benavides, no? Section twenty three kabadate. I don't know if twenty three yan. Sino pa ba mga student ko dati dito? Basta yung mga student ko dati, you can ask them no, about paano ako magpa-quiz, uh, how are, paano yung classes ko. No? So, yun. You can ask them. Anyway, so let me introduce myself uh, really quick. No? So, my name is Jim R. Cruz and I'm a registered chemist. No? So, just like you, once you were able to pass the boards, you will have your title. No? Magiging RMT naman kayo in the future. Okay? So, yeah, so that's my name. I'm Sir Jim R. Uh, Jim R. Cruz, no? So, my working experience was this, no? So, since 2018, I started teaching, no? Right after my graduation sa college, no? So, I graduated last 2018. Then, in the same year, I started teaching, no? So, so I have been teaching at two universities now. So, PUP and FEU. Uh, Polytechnic University of the Philippines and the Far Eastern University. No? So, yeah. In PUP, I teach senior high school, uh, engineering students, food technology students. No? So, yun yung mga students ko sa PUP. Uh, in FEU, I teach uh, medtech students, bio, biology students, psychology students and education students no? so ngayon sem ito yung mga tinuturuan ko last sem lahat yan no? so yun yun lang no? <laughs> uh, if you have any ano if you have any questions about my ano my identity just look for my link in account no. Uh, tingin na lang kay sa LinkedIn ko. Andun yung details ko. Okay. So yun. So yun, that's all. No. So I'm Sir Jim and I will be your instructor until the end of this semester no. So I hope na uh ano ba? So I hope that I will ano I can help you sa pag-pag-understand ng anak em no. Okay? So again, this is a hard subject pero Kaya natin yan. Na. So, yun lang. Um, what else? Ano pa ba kailangan ko sabihin sa inyo? Tignan ko nga.
Ah, okay. So, complete na talaga tayo. Okay? So, with that, we're done for our session today. Uh, that means... Uh, we're good to go na no? so by next week we will have our ano our ano formal classes na no? so by next week we will have review of gen chem no? so this is just about uh, ano about scientific notation significant figures then dimensional analysis no the conversions no because those stuff are necessary for Ano, for anakem questions no so we have to uh, review all this stuff no okay although you can study this in advance pero di discuss din natin siya next week no so we will discuss that next week okay so yun so uh, by the way uh, if you were unable to attend the classes pala no uh, just because of emergencies or may sakit kayo no if you're sick or you're ano you're having some errands and you cannot attend the class or you just uh, slept too much no and pagkagising nyo alas just na so just in those cases no if you were not able to attend the class i have my youtube channel no where i upload the recording of our class discussions no? so andito siya sa youtube mabagal lang internet ko wait lang ayun so I upload my lessons here on YouTube, no. So just in case na hindi kayo makapasok, no. If you were unable to attend the class, you can check on my YouTube channel, okay? So my YouTube channel is J Kemi, <coughs> okay? So this is J Kemi. I upload my course lessons here, no. The class recordings here, okay? Um, yun. So I just go to J Kemi. Then go to playlist. Our playlist for the semester is this one, AY 2021 S2 class recording. So I will upload all our lessons for this semester in this playlist. No? Uh, you will find it useful when you are reviewing for your exams, reviewing for your quizzes, no? because that's the feedback of my former students. You know? So, ganun din siguro sa inyo. Okay, so yeah. If you want to review your in org org, you can also check my other playlist, no? AY221 S1 class recording. So these are my lessons last sem, no? If you want to review your in org now, no? Pero if you don't want, edi okay lang, no? Pero just in case, no? You want to review, you can check out this link, no? Uh, I uploaded here the lessons, uh, my class recordings, uh, inorganic, organic chem. No? And my students find it useful no? when they are taking exams. No? Nanunood daw sila niyan daw. So, yun. So, yun lang. Tapos, ayun si Barney. Okay, so, anyway, so again, uh, if you will miss the class, no, because of uh, some... Uh, some circumstances you can check on this YouTube channel and this playlist no okay so yun if you want to review for exams punta lang kayo dyan. okay so yun lang and with that I will end my ano na my session ano. okay so thank you for your attendance if you have any questions uh, you can ask me now or pwedeng personally naman okay Okay, so anyway, so thank you for your attendance today. I hope na nakita natin yung importance of Anakem, no? I hope nakita natin siya because that will be our motivation for this subject, no? So without the motivation that Anakem is important, we will find this subject hard, no? However, with the motivation that this subject is important, so we will find this subject important, no? Important, no? Yun yung magiging... Ano natin, energizer, no? That will be our motivation to continue our study sa anak. Okay? So again, <coughs> just fair warning lang. Uh, this subject is calculation intensive, so better to have your calculators with you and review your maths. Okay? Starting next week, puro math na tayo. Okay? So thank you and I'll see you again next week now. So, a copy of this class recording will be uploaded on YouTube just in case you want to watch it again. Huh? So, yeah. so, thank you very much. Please eat your breakfast and stay safe. Now, I'll see you again next week, Friday.
Okay. So, salamat po and mag-iingat kayo. So, thank you. Bye-bye.